The discovery, evolution and practice of space travel has brought about countless success stories and brilliant developments in science at large. Whether it was the early days of the space race between the United States and the Soviet Union, or the recent studies held by NASA and other major space agencies, technologies have been advanced through no greater threshold than the one offered by the exploration of the cosmos. Most fascinating of all is how these technologies and scientific inventions have made their way into the everyday lives of citizens from around the world. And not just basic technologies like memory foam scratch-proof lenses, but impactful, life-extending medical tools that have revolutionized healthcare on a global scale. In order to shed some light on these fascinating breakthroughs in the medical field, here are five tools you might not know were actually invented for space travel. One of the greatest contributions to medical sciences was the talking wheelchair, officially referred to as the versatile portable speech prosthesis. The main purpose of the VSP is to allow for non-verbal folks that use a wheelchair for movement to be able to communicate and otherwise speak through their device. The invention was grown from the earliest developments of synthesized speech NASA was implementing for their own aircraft. The project began in 1978, and the first VSP devices were in full swing by November of 1979. At first, people diagnosed with cerebral palsy were the first to utilize the technology, as electric wheelchairs were initially given to those diagnosed with the movement disorder. The VSP functions much like a normal electric wheelchair, but also includes just a few very simple, easy to access buttons that its user can click and manipulate to speak with a top-notch speech prosthesis accuracy. These communications assist with users who are stuck amongst crowds of other people, attempting to speak in the dark in which speech is necessary, as well as assisting communication with young children and people in general who are unable to see the VSP. More recently, VSP devices have utilized a technology called silent speech recognition, which uses internal algorithms to detect and recognize words that hadn't been trained in the wheelchair computer's vocabulary. These readings are based on signals that are normally found in the face and neck of humans to best resemble speech without the actual vocals. Before talking wheelchairs were revolutionized by NASA, space agencies were already making substantial headway in assisting people who used similar devices. Space agencies had been developing synthetic material for their air and spacecrafts for years before they realized the lightweight material could be utilized on Earth. Thus engineers began applying their synthetics to moving devices, such as wheelchairs and walkers. The collapsible wheelchair was first invented in 1932 by American Harry Jennings. The earliest renditions were bulky and heavy, making transportation a bit tricky when traveling long distances. In the early 1950s, wheelchair and walker needs skyrocketed after World War II veterans found an increase in need due to wartime related disabilities. This is where synthetics came into play, as wheelchairs were gradually designed with a focus on comfort, ergonomics and performance. What better way to improve all three at the same time than the material used to put humans in space for the first time in history? Since the dawn of human exploration in space, Astronomers here on Earth have maintained their desire to keep a close eye on the health of all their astronauts thousands of miles up in the air. Space travel has countless negative effects on the human body, such as a decrease in bone density, a loss of muscle mass, fatigue issues that destroy sleeping cycles, which then leads to poor immune responses, heart defects, brain disorders, as well as countless other long-term side effects. To be able to combat some of these issues and monitor astronauts from afar, NASA needed to develop a communication system that could handle the telemetry between Earth and wherever their astronauts were in space, 
whether it be in the International Space Station or beyond. One such technology involved EKG readings. NASA developed tools to be able to read the electrical activity of an astronaut's heart, process the data, and then transmit the information all the way down to Earth in a matter of minutes, if not seconds. Over time, the technology expanded into other medical readings as well, such as brain activity and oxygen levels. Eventually, the same process utilised by NASA was factored into the manufacturing of vehicles and transportation devices used by emergency medical services, called EMS Communications. EMS Communications allow for attendants in an ambulance to take readings such as EKG or oxygen levels and quickly transmit it to hospitals for the fastest and most accurate care once the patient arrives at an emergency room or ICU. In modern times, this might seem like a basic technology with the usage of satellites, computers, and the internet, but during the times of the Mercury and Apollo missions, it was considered life-saving tech that otherwise would see an increase in deaths in those who were being transported to a hospital. With the increase of kidney failure and other kidney-related issues plaguing the medical field over the last few decades, you probably know someone who has to undergo dialysis appointments multiple times a week. Little do most folks know this wouldn't be possible without a scientific breakthrough by NASA in the 1960s. During this time, the Marquardt Corporation was attempting to figure out a process that could both purify and recycle water in the middle of a space mission. One of their biggest revelations was that one could remove the toxic waste from dialysis fluid through purification, and then flush the fluid back through its source. Realising this had an immediate potential to help patients with kidney issues, the system was developed into a kidney dialysis machine to be used by medical professionals in the real world. Without a doubt, NASA's focus on the project led to the widespread removal of toxic waste from dialysis fluid and has allowed so many people to continue on with life, despite the total or partial failure of such an important organ. Ventricular fibrillations and other heart arrhythmias have been plaguing humans, both young and old, for centuries. Specifically, ventricular fibrillation is the disorder. Ventricular fibrillation is the disorder in which the heart stops pumping blood, which leads to a quick death or severe brain damage in just minutes if the issue is not corrected. Correction techniques have mostly relied on heart defibrillators, inventions that have changed in shape and size since their inception. Heart defibrillators have been around for decades, with the first external defib devices coming all the way back at the close of the 19th century. In 1899, two Swiss physiologists discovered that smaller electrical charges would create a ventricular fibrillation in canines, but a bigger electrical charge would reverse the issue. These findings led to further experiments into the 1930s, when William Cowenhoven invented an external defibrillator that could be used on failing hearts on patients who were already opened up during surgery or other procedures. In the 1950s, the technology was developed even further so that the chest could remain closed and ventricle defibrillation could be enacted with a charge of over 1000 volts using paddles on a metal plate measuring at 40 millimeters in diameter. Eventually, the modern-day defib devices we see in hospitals and in portable first aid kits were made popular in the 1980s, but not before a similar device was created for internal, implanted use with the help of funding by NASA. NASA saw the potential of microcomputers in medicine and paid in-tech systems and MedRad Incorporated in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania for their research in developing a microcomputer that could be placed in the human chest to aid in the correction of ventricular fibrillation. The development was led by Dr. Michael Morowski, a former Holocaust survivor and a leading cardiac physician in the world of arrhythmia research, and American cardiologist Morton Moer. With their forces combined, the agency and team of doctors created the AID using NASA's money and technology. The device was a miniature defib machine consisting of the aforementioned microcomputer, its own power source, and twin electrodes that sensed the heart activity. The AID could detect when ventricular fibrillation was about to occur, 
and would release the shocks necessary to keep the heart in order. Eventually, the AID evolved into the AIDB, which was used to treat other arrhythmias, such as ventricular tachycardia. AIDB was even more advanced in that it contained four electrodes instead of two, as well as an actual audio speaker that can be monitored externally by a physician checking on the status and battery life of the device. The AIDB also featured an internal counting mechanism that would record every shock administered by the device, which would then be transmitted to a physician's telemeter device outside of the human body. It's safe to say, without Dr. Morowski's courage and the resources provided by NASA, there would be a much larger uptick in arrhythmia-related death around the world, if not for the efforts that led to the implantable heart defibrillator.